through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 192. Woo! I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to be giving you our DVD rundown for the week of October 2nd. Yeehaw! That's yep. crazy. I know. It's crazy. October already. Ah, Time to get our Halloween on. plans. Ah, yes. Oh, jeez. Don't even, don't even, don't even start. <laughs> That's all I got to say to that. Hey, Spencer, do you got your Halloween costume yet? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I'm going to come as Greg. <laughs> I'll be my Halloween costume. Come as you and you can come as me. All right. Um... It's kind of a decent week, you know. I was I was kind of pleasantly. It's okay. Yeah, yeah it's I'll okay. go okay. It's okay. We're gonna start off with a ho and then mm -hmm. on a higher note. Yes. Um, the release of Dark Shadows comes out this week. It, it, the movie, not the show that already came out awesomely. Yeah, that came out with like the yeah the super 6, coffin, DVD, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now we're talking about the Tim Burton movie with Johnny Depp. What Reunited a and it feels so bad. <laughs> um, what but, a surprise for this week though that we got a Tim Burton right? Yeah, with Consider. Frank and Weenie coming yep. out. Yeah, only appropriate. But mm -hmm. nevertheless, you know, it's got a. It's got a decent release in terms of the yeah, DVD. As far as what's actually I mean, it's got Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy all together. Mm -hmm. It's got a slew like of spe that. special features. Uh, one about be becoming Barnabas Collins mm. with Johnny Depp. One about Angelique, a witch scorn, <laughs> which is about uh, Johnny Depp and Eva Green's yes. relationship. And I just watched her again in Casino Royale, and she's uh, yes. pretty awesome. So like I would Green. like to see her get more work. I'm That's just right. saying. Um, another one we got... Um, Look back at the quirky cast members, um, such as Helen and Bottom Carter, Johnny Depp, and how their co stars discuss their unique working hmm. relationship. Spooky, scary. Yes. And uh, one other one that interests me was Vampires, Witches, and Werewolves. Oh my. Which <laughs> uncovered the method behind Tim Burton's madness as he twists <laughs> and tweaks his favorite classic movie monsters for <sighs> the gothic universe of Dark Shadows. I love that that's going to be the new creativity. is not coming up with something new, but spinning off, remaking, or redoing is something that already Already, done. we've been there for a long time, I feel like. Yeah, but I think I it's like... been a lot more prevalent in the last... Uh, Two to six years, two to five years than it has been, and say I would like some research on that. So if anyone can give me oh, there's statistics, plenty. There's, I would like to see that. There's plenty. There's no in 2011. I don't think any of the number one blockbusters were original titles. I think they were all, mm. as far as like profit, they were all like sequel remakes. Interesting. I would. I'll look into that. That's very curious. There's a graphic going around the internet. Sure. I'll try to find it. Please you. do. I will link it in. Whatever. Um, you know, it's it's a decent release. It's mm -hmm. got decent special features. Yeah. I, th I think, you know, if you're a fan of the movie yes. or if you like just lots of special yes. features, it's a decent one exactly. to go with. Or if you've been a fan of the show and you want to see where they went wrong if you didn't like yeah, the movie. It might seriously. be interesting just to rent somewhere from like Scarecrow, your Scarecrow and yeah. check out those bonus features. So then later, when you're telling people how the better original show is so much better, you have all these facts to throw at them. Right that's in their good. face. Yeah, that's what I like, I like to do. Yeah. Research like, how much I hate something. I like to throw things in your face, too. I know. That's good. I know you do. <laughs> that confetti, that was too much, that one. And the glitter. Uh, out. One uh, release that you had brought up mm -hmm. was the release of Downton Abbey Season 1 and 2. Yes. Limited edition, original UK version mm -hmm. set. It's a mouthful. Yes, But in is. essence, it is the US release of the original uncut UK broadcast versions of yes. Downton Abbey. Um, formatted for US playback. Yes, which is nice because a lot of times with British shows, they get pared down for an American it's, audience I mean, or they get of, shifted to try to be there. more appealing. It's not just there. Yeah. Think about uh, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Remember that set that they That's did right. the Swedish ones that were like, I think they were three hours yeah. a piece. They were all the extended it. Yeah, yeah, so like, I mean, we, we don't always get all the good no, stuff. We don't. We're so it's kind of nice pretty. for a show that's so British. Here's the thing that I have over. a question about. Okay. Limited edition release of this set. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you why it's limited edition. Isn't there a season three coming? Aren't they doing that? <laughs> yeah. Like, doesn't it feel kind of shitty to get, like, a limited edition set and it's only, like, part of the series? I don't know. It depends on how into the show you are. Uh, for me, that would be not at all at this point. Because if you consider all the people that bought uh, Harry Potter groups before the yeah, last movie was out, yeah. and that, how that was whole marketed. I feel like I mean, that's the sucker yeah. bet, though. Sorry. No offense anyone yeah. out there. It's just, it's they, they gouge you so much for the money. It's the thing it's that kills me. And I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Downton Abbey. Yeah. I've just never watched it. I'm not much mm. of a period piece thing. Gotcha. People seem to love it. I know Brandy loves yes, it. You know, yes, she's got yes. a podcast about that very topic. Yes, that's right. Um, in terms of this release, the special features are kind of meh. For there's a limited a, release. 
release, pretty average. There's a making of Downton Abbey, a history of the house, mm -hmm. which is a lavish Edwardian mansion, yes, I believe. Yes, and there's almost a character in the yes, show. in Yorkshire, um, which is pretty cool. I mm -hmm. mean, school house, yes. you know, whatever. There's a great British, great British heritage pass, a promotional spot for British tourism. Huh. Like, man. <laughs> Let's be real. Tell us what you really think, Spencer. Yeah. Um, for season two, they have a fashion in uniforms featurette, a romance in the time of war, and house to hospital featurettes. Interesting. So, meh. And they also, the whole thing also includes the Down Abbey Christmas special. I don't know what it is with British people and Christmas specials, but they just love the shit out of that stuff. And there's anything wrong with that because why? I, I think... British, or sorry, Christmas specials are communists. I think more than anything, it has to do with usually not Hating Christmas. So, well, usually six episode seasons that aren't gone the uh, full year. True. So a Christmas sure. is an easy. You can, you can make something new and have it be like Doctor Who always does it to yeah. start the new season because it's so separate from when the season runs. They yeah. have their reasons in the same way that we have shows premiere in summer for some bizarre reason. I think that's ridiculous too. Yeah, but see. nevertheless, uh, my. Uh, Great grandfather's Ebenezer Scrooge. So yes. maybe, maybe that's yes. just why I'm down. Ebenezer on it. Scrooge Fornicari. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm little known. Yeah. Uh, little known fact. You, you didn't know he was Italian, right? <laughs> yeah. um, moving on. Uh, one that I found kind of interesting in sort of a curious way mm. was People Like Us. This yes. is uh, from director Alex Kurtzman. Stars Chris Pine. Chris Pine, Elizabeth Banks. That's story right. about a guy who discovers uh, he has a sister, a half-sister right. that his yes. father cheated on his mother with. And, you know... And I think they each knew their father, but didn't yes. know they were related. Yes. Right? Yeah. And he's he, now dead? Yep. Or something? They yeah. find out after his death. Yeah. And the thing about it was, when I first saw this movie, I, I came out and was like, okay, that was like a really good Lifetime movie. Mm, interesting. And the that thing that spun mean. me... No, it's, it's fair. I mean, it's just... It's, it's, it's not like a I'm not saying unusual it's story. Yeah, okay. Like, you know, fair they enough. didn't okay. know each other. They get to know gotcha. each other. That's that's fair way. Seems very cut, hallmarky, yeah. simple. The thing that I spun it for me in a different direction was that apparently it is inspired by director Alex Kurtman's life. Ah. So this is a very personal story. Wow. Too. I mean, this is... I mean, it makes a lot of sense that why a guy who does Star Trek and Transformers and yes. Fringe and all these, like, Would have big, this, like, dramatic... Tiny little story, thing, and this yeah. is his feature film directing debut. Huh. So for him to do that seems like a very dramatic shift, and it makes sense why they have featurettes on this release, which is uh. a Blu-ray DVD combo of um, number one with the bullet, the story behind people like us, inspired by true offense. Filmmakers Alex Kurtzman and Robert Orsi um, go back to their roots and make a small film for the from the heart. Interesting. So that's cool. Uh, and additionally, that explains why there's a ton of. Uh, commentary tracks. There's one with Alex Kurtzman and direct, or sorry, Alex Kurtzman and writer Jody Lambert. There's one with Alex Kurtzman and actors Chris Pine and Elizabeth Banks. There's select scene commentary with Alex Kurtzman and Michelle Pfeiffer. Hmm. You know, it's it's definitely very much discussing the story that's based on, and I, I think that's very interesting yeah. to me. It, it adds a really needed dimension yeah. to the movie that otherwise would have been just a very well executed lifetime. Movie. I can I can see that. You know, true stories that are not just loosely based, but are actually a, tend to be close sure. interpretation. I think those are one of the areas that special features should delve totally. into the most because this is the most interesting. Like I just saw Sleepwalk with me, and mm. I would the reading uh, listening to the audio interview with yes. you. I I learned a lot more back to back uh, totally, behind the scenes yeah, yeah. stuff about it and stuff like that's interesting with true to life stories. We, it, it, we latch I mean, on to it. It's so much more interesting when you find out was real, was mm -hmm. fiction, what, yeah. where everything sort of was yeah. grown from. It's it's just a really interesting film. And as I said, you know, it's not that the production value is necessarily bad. Yes. It was flawlessly made for dude's first time hmm. director. I mean, Granny's just that on and wrote. its initial viewing, you weren't blown away. Well, the story is yeah. just sort of Simple. something that you've seen mm. before, yes. like you know, oh, I didn't really. I had a brother. Like, <laughs> oh, is that I really have a yeah, brother? Exactly. Yeah, it's not exactly that shocking. <laughs> Uh, the last one I wanted to discuss was the Universal Classic Monsters, the Essential Collection. And, you know, they've been doing these Universal releases yes. throughout the summer and whatnot. Because they're 100 a few year yeah, anniversary. Exactly. Uh, this one I found particularly interesting, though. This is a pretty awesome release in that it includes eight of their classic monster features nice. all in one package for, I think it was $112. But, I mean, you've got, let's see, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, The Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera. 
Creature from the Black Lagoon uh, in Blu-ray 3D. Awesome. Just throwing that out there because uh, it's originally 3D. Awesome. And not only do you have all these uh, releases all in one package, but you also have tons of special features for each mm. one of the discs. I mean, there's mm. uh, essentially... Um, Film historian commentaries on all of them. For instance, the Dracula one also includes the Spanish version of the film that wow. they filmed at the same time. I don't know if you ever heard about that, but uh -uh. The, there was a Spanish version of the film that they filmed on the same sets at night. Interesting. When they had shut down the huh. American or the U.S. production of it during the day. Wow. Yeah. So they just took advantage of having those sets all that's together awesome. and just film it. So that's Much on like there. Three Stooges. Exactly. There's a feature out about the restoration of Dracula. There's a. Um, how Hollywood makes a monster for Frankenstein or Karloff, wow. the gentle monster, which sounds interesting. Yeah, Boris Karloff. I mean, uh, let's see, Black Lagoon, the 3D um, update of wow. the Blu-ray 3D. Very cool. I mean, as I said, they all have film historians doing commentary tracks for him, photos from the productions, um, just tons it's and like tons of special big features. Big clump of movies and a lot of stuff. Big clump of movies, tons of special features. Pretty friggin' awesome, because mm -hmm. I love those classic Universal monster movies. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, $110, I, I would buy that over the Harry Potter set, but that might just be me. So, <laughs> that would also or Bond be. even. I, I might even buy that over Bond. Oh, yeah. Bond's pretty sweet too, but you know, I, I just really like monsters. Yeah. Like I said, Monster Squad, yo. Wolfman's Keep got nards. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that brings us to the end of this. Join us next time for a discussion of Winona Ryder yes. in honor of Frankenweenie. Yes. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number. 323-761-9842. Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, no, not Stitcher, uh, Miro, Roku, Blip. Check in and get glue. And we will see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the side of Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.